Fujifilm autofocus settings. If you're looking to go deep and understand what each and every autofocus setting does, the differences between each of the autofocus modes, and how you can put them all together appropriately for different shooting situations, well, you're in the right place. First things first, let's talk about the autofocus mode selector switch on the outside of the camera. This will let you pick between autofocus single, which is great for static subjects, autofocus continuous for continuous focus, for like moving subjects and sports, and then manual focus for the focus adjustment or use with manual focus lenses. So now jumping into the autofocus and manual focus menu. So the focus area lets you place the autofocus point anywhere within the frame. Typically you can also control the focus area with a joystick if your camera has one or you can also set up a function button for quick access to the focus area. I move the point around uh, depending on the subject's placement. So here I, I like to put it on like the eye for example. But as a default, I do like to center it, and you can double tap to center it if you don't have any intended composition in mind just yet. So for autofocus mode, we can select between single point, zone, wide tracking, and all. So for single point, the camera, again, focuses on uh, one single point, and this is great for general situations as well as pinpoint focus on a small detail. And you can even punch in with the rear command out on most cameras to ensure that you've got critical focus. And if you go with the focus area menu, you can scroll around with the um, rear command dial and to kind of change the size of the focus point to be larger or smaller. I usually use between the smallest and the second smallest one, depending on what I'm shooting. Okay, so next for zone, you can set up a selected zone focus point like this. And this includes multiple focus points, which makes it easier to track a subject. So it usually gives you like six different focus points that it's going to be choosing from, uh, depending on where it is in the frame. And then same as the single point mode, you can uh, click and then change the size of the zone using the rear command wheel. I like to use a 3x3 three three whenever I use the zone focusing mode. Okay, so now for wide tracking, which is basically the full auto mode for the autofocus of Fujifilm cameras. In the autofocus single mode, the camera will basically just adjust and go to whatever is the highest contrast in the frame or whatever is closest to the front and it'll lock onto it. It will tell you which points are selected. So here you can see it's right on the nose right there. I only employ this type of focus mode when I'm doing selfies with wide angle lenses um, with uh, face and eye tracking. And then if you switch over to autofocus continuous, um, the camera tracks on a subject in the selected focus point and then it follows them within the frame. So if I put my hand out right here, you can see that it's kind of like moving to follow my hand a little bit. You do have to be realistic about how fast this can actually work as it only works best with medium to slow moving subjects. I personally use this when I want to keep the frame the same and have a subject walk across the frame and shoot them as they're walking. And then the last mode is AF all. And basically what this does is if you select the focus point selection and rotate to change the size of the point, um, once you get basically you can start with the smallest one and then you which is a single point and then once it gets to the point where it's almost like zone it'll turn into zone right here zone and then when we get bigger it'll turn into wide tracking and this is cool because you don't have to set up another function button or go into the menu to select a different focus mode in general i use autofocus single for most instances uh, including still life and portrait and documentary work the key is to using it with human subjects is to constantly half press and just keep acquiring focus um, even as the subject is moving. And then once you're ready, you just press it all the way down. I found that autofocus single uh, works way faster um, to acquire and it confidently locks on better than um, autofocus continuous single point. But for very predictable or slow motion, like a bride walking down the aisle, I actually use autofocus continuous in the single point orientation. Um, and I manually move the focus point as needed, um, but holding down the shutter button at half press to continuously focus as the subject is moving. When I do have something very critical that's moving very, very fast, and I know I won't be able to track it as reliably, 
Um, I am going to be using the zone focus mode. One situation like that would be like my kids running back and forth or a reception grand entrance. I will use zone autofocus in the autofocus continuous mode. I will place the zone generally where I want the composition to be and then kind of point my camera toward that point where I want to track. And then again, as I mentioned, I only use this wide tracking area for um, selfies um, in autofocus single and then for long, predictable, slow tracking shots in autofocus continuous. In general, for Fujifilm cameras, if you use less points and give the camera less things to think about and manage, I found the continuous autofocus performs a lot better. And again, autofocus single always seems to lock better and faster, even in darker light than uh autofocus continuous, especially for the Fujifilm X-T3, which I noticed in low light situation. Okay, so now onto the autofocus continuous custom settings. Let's talk about this. So set one is the general purpose one and it works well for a variety of moving subjects. Set two um, is to ignore obstacles and continue to track subjects. Here the camera will focus on the initial subject. If the subject leaves the frame or if something else comes into the frame like a passerby, it won't adjust automatically like just yet. Um, this is what I actually have my camera set to most of the time for the weddings that I shoot as well as documentary work and in any type of professional work where somebody's gonna be moving around. So set three is for accelerating and decelerating subjects. Here the camera will compensate for a subject accelerating or decelerating. So for subjects that are in motion and they're constantly speeding up and slowing down, this is the one that you want to be using. Set four is for suddenly appearing subjects. The camera will be trying to anticipate something that comes into the frame. It will also quickly switch between different subjects if something jumps in front of something else. So if you have a lot of stuff going on but the closer the frame is what you prefer, then this is the one that you want to use. Okay, so set five is for erratically moving and accelerating and decelerating subjects. Basically for anything that's super hard to track. Subjects that are doing uh, changes to speed and going left and right. Um, I basically just reserve this for any time that I'm photographing my kids playing around. And if your camera has it, there is a custom set six that you can use to set up your own combination of continuous custom settings. For this, I would reference the values that are listed down for one through five to help you create a unique behavior based on your own needs and what you're photographing. And again, you can see the values um, basically right here at the bottom for the different type of autofocus custom settings. But as a summary, the tracking sensitivity determines how long the camera waits to switch focus and when an object enters the focus area or leaves it. The lower values switch very quickly and often, and the higher values, um, the longer the camera will wait. The speed tracking sensitivity is for how sensitive the tracking is of the subject's velocity. The higher the value, the, great, the greater the camera will try to respond to any sudden changes in movements. And then the zone area switching determines the focus area that's given priority in the zone focus mode. So center will prioritize subject in the center of the zone that you set. Auto will focus on whatever's at the center first and then switch as necessary. And then front will give priority to whatever is closest to the camera. Next in the menu is to store AF mode by orientation. This chooses whether the focus mode and area is saved separately for portrait orientation or landscape orientation. I'm not sure where people uh, would need to focus mode to be stored separately, but for focus area, this makes sense for people photography. Say if you want the head to be closer to the top, you can set these uh, differently for both, depending on which way you orient your camera when you hold it in the vertical mode. So AI point display is basically if you want the individual points to be shown for zone and wide tracking, I leave this to on so I know um, where the other points are if the camera is trying to focus between different points. But you can then set this to off if it's too distracting for you. So the number of focus points lets you have access to the full number of points or a reduced number of points. The main advantage to using less points is it's quicker to navigate around. But I do think with practice and if you have a touch screen enabled, using the 425 points isn't really that bad. But for me, I like the fidelity of more focus points. But if you need more quicker workflow and quicker shooting, or if you find that um, you don't manually move the autofocus points quick enough, um, then definitely I would try the 117 point mode. 
So if you uh, turn on pre-AF, this basically will have the camera always continuously trying to adjust focus even when the shutter isn't pressed halfway. This supposedly helps to prevent missed shots, but I haven't tried this myself. This uh, does have a significant decrease on battery life as your camera will be always working to try to um, acquire focus. So that's why I turned this one off. So AF Illuminator is the little light at the front that helps to light the subject in dark settings. I typically set this to off, that way I don't um, telegraph to the people that I'm taking photographs of that I'm shooting them, and it makes them change what they're doing or act awkward. But if you're in a situation like a dance floor where people know where you're going to be taking a shot of them, and you're in the dark, feel free to enable this to get more success with locking in focus. So for face and eye detection, you, you can set the camera to automatically track focus on just faces, eyes, or specific eyes of the subject. Whenever I use this, I put it to um, eye auto, and I typically use face and eye uh, tracking only when I'm taking photos of my kids. Up until recent updates, I didn't really feel like this face and eye tracking was usable for professional settings, but definitely test it out and see if for your own photography, it's reliable and see what kind of success you get. Basically, the confirmation of tracking will be a green box with a white box around the eye. So for autofocus, manual focus, this is basically when you have this enabled, you'll be able to override the autofocus single by turning the manual focus ring when the shutter button is pressed halfway. So for manual focus assist, um, these are basically different visual aids to help you obtain manual focus. These will show up once you switch the focus dial to M. So standard is just to basically zoom into the image. Digital split image is basically like a split prism uh, rangefinder. Once the subject is in focus, this will basically, if you look at this, once the subject is in focus, the lines will kind of line up right here. And then the digital micro prism is pretty much the same thing, but just having a lot smaller squares. And then my own preference is to use focus peaking. And this will basically highlight either the high contrast areas in a specific color, um, either white, blue, yellow, or red. And I personally like to use red high, like this. And then basically you can see the different areas turn red um, right around here when they're in focus. So focus check basically will automatically zoom in anytime you move the focus ring of the camera. I have this on on, but if you find yourself always moving the manual focus on accident, you might want to turn this off. And then for interlock, um, spot AE and focus area. So when you set this on and when photometry is set to spot metering, the spot will be the same as the autofocus point that you're using. So for instant AFS, this is basically when you set autofocus on to be another button. Um, this will determine what that function does. What you can do here is set the camera to manual focus and use a separate button other than the shutter to be AF on and this is the equivalent of um, or an alternative to back button focus if you heard of it as the camera is able to manual focus and then you can enable focus um, with AF on. I personally don't use back button focus though with my Fujifilm cameras. So the depth of field scale, you basically have two options, either pixel basis or film format basis. Film format is to help you make judgments on depth of field based on uh, printing in its final form. And then pixel basis is for assessing depth of field for a photo that will be viewed on a high resolution computer. So determine what your final format is when picking this. And then for release and focus priority, we will be determining how the camera focuses in both the autofocus single and autofocus continuous mode. So release is basically when shutter firing is prioritized over the locking of the focus of photos. Pictures can be taken when the camera isn't in focus, basically. Usually people use this for high action when sometimes the camera is in mid uh, focus and you're okay taking a slightly out of focus photo in lieu of capturing the um, moment. I have this set for AFC to be on release. And then focus priority is when the focus is prioritized over the speed of the shutter. The camera will only take a photo when the photo is in focus. I set this uh, to focus for autofocus single. And then now we have the touchscreen mode here was where you can set what the touchscreen focus is set to. You can uh, touch focus which uh, basically touches, basically will take a shot like this. Just autofocus, and then this will basically pick the spot in autofocus. 
I actually don't like to do that and I actually use area which will basically just pick the area then you can set autofocus with the half press when you're ready or you can turn it off altogether. So I'm hoping that this video helped you to better understand the different nuances and capabilities of the Fujifilm camera autofocus system. If you want to learn more about my recommended Fujifilm autofocus settings for challenging photographic scenarios that I encounter as a wedding photographer, a portrait photographer, and even just a dad photographing toddlers, please be sure to check out my other video that's linked up above or down in the description below. And if you want to see how I personally set up all my settings on my Fujifilm cameras for weddings, portraiture, and documenting my family specifically on the Fujifilm film xt4 xt3 and the x100v please check out the playlist linked up above also down in the description all right so we covered a lot in this video if you have any lingering questions about what i went over please don't hesitate to ask them down in the comments as well as give this video a like if you learned something new and as always please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already if you're new here i post a new fujifilm or photography video every week but if that's too long please be sure to follow me on instagram at, at @rgbphoto as i'm posting new tips tricks and tutorials every single day all right Right, that's it for me remember to get out go shoot and i'll catch you all in the next one